Hey folks, it's time for yet another custom lesson. This one has been requested by one of my viewers on Twitch. Again, self promo, I do stream on Twitch every Thursday through Sunday from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Please do visit me there. I get really lonely, so please ask me with questions and make sure not to call me poofy because that would hurt my feelings and you definitely don't want to do that. In any case, the stuff that was requested were sword and fists. And there are very specific guardian spirits that are going to have very specific cores this time. So I don't have much flexibility, but I can show you some really cool things that we can work with. So starting with Heobishin, which is a really fun guardian spirit to take advantage of, particularly because the benefits of this guardian spirit, while they seem a little off, they're pretty cool. So you get a damage bonus for your Amrita Gehage. It's not like too much, it's maybe a couple percent. But if you use Brute Guardian Spirits, you get extra, sorry, Brute Soul Cores, you get extra damage. And then you have a chance to dispel ailments on strong attacks, which can be quite valuable. So if you're doing a lot of quick strong attacks, so Sword has pretty quick low stance ones, you have a chance to straight up just get rid of whatever negative ailments you have on yourself. And then you got Anima Charge Critical, which is nice. So it kind of seems like all over the place, but this is a pretty cool Guardian Spirit. And what makes this so fantastic is that the Guardian Spirit attack, the Talisman, which you can use to get the attack, it's just so cool. It's so fun to use. In any case, I had very specific soul cores, so let's just talk about them. I'll worry about the animation stuff and I'll show it to you on a bigger screen as opposed to just like, hey, what's the tooltip doing here, yada, yada, yada. So. Uh, the Owl Soul Core is one that I actually don't think gets used enough. I find this core to be stupidly powerful. So I'll just show you what it is briefly here. And then, oops, I'll show you what it is briefly here. And you can see right now, long animation, I'm summoning little ghosts and they hit a target. And it's not really clear what it does. So let's go to the tooltip and it doesn't really help us either. Sprout the wings of the Owl and unleash a swarm of spirits. Now. I'm just going to tell you this, the amount of key damage this soul core does is absolutely stupid. It is really, really good at maximum key damage and it's, it's dumb. It's straight up dumb and I'm surprised more players aren't using this, but I, I think I know why. In any case, what does this come with? Yokai ability damage corrupted. So as you can see here right now, the soul cores are all corrupted, so you're going to get bonus damage. Extra damage in the dark realm. Dark realm and I happen to find a reasonable anima bonus for an enemy that is corrupted. Great. That's cool. I get whatever anima bonus you want. I just happen to find one that it's synergistic. So why not? That's great. But yeah, I'll show you how bonkers this is soon enough. Uh, it's a modic core. I have covered this before, but there is a really interesting combo that I'll showcase a bit later involving the Owl. Uh, once again, Itsumare is one of the cores I would actually recommend you get to rank 30 because this anima bonus on purification is ridiculous. Remember, you purify a yokai realm anytime you just keep pulse within it. It doesn't mean perfect keep pulse, it just means anytime you keep pulse in the yokai realm. That is ridiculous. Of course, this also has corrupted accumulation, so really beneficial for anyone using corrupted weapons, which is, as you know, what I use by default. Also comes with the Yokai ability key pulse. I've talked about this many times, but this allows you to fluidly transition from normal attacks into Yokai abilities and get a whole host of benefits that are in the shifting trees, which you can look at on your own time. This just happens to have faster key recovery. Uh, no, it doesn't stack with the other one that I had. It's just, again, all I cared was Yokai ability key pulls. That was it. Rank 30, boom, you've already got a crazy Itsumari core. So as shown here, there is an explosion which can hit multiple targets, but I'm gonna show you some really crazy stuff you can do. Last but not least, I was requested to use Ongyoki. I found one I had that I just tested ranked to 30. These special effects that are locked aren't like too remarkable. Sure, you get super stealth, which is cool. Extra damage from behind, which is nice. Uh, I just was mainly trying out Scorched Enemy, which just has synergy given that Eobition is a fire-based guardian spirit, but it's really not a big deal. The Life Drain Yokai ability hit is really nice and that's actually why I boosted this up. But again, get whatever benefits you want. If you're not familiar with Ongyoki, it is effectively your pocket smoke bomb. Enemies will disengage, excluding bosses, but they can't hit you. So you are invulnerable for a brief period of time. So that makes this a lot of fun. Let's get on to the secondary guardian spirit. So I was tasked with messing with Sohaya. Sohaya is really cool because you've got 
you, you'll never be confused. That's that's ridiculous. Uh, it does have other anti yokai benefits such as counter yokai tactics, which you can usually find on scrolls. Key recovery bonus, I guess, is great, but yeah, the nullify confusion is really what makes this awesome. And so, okay, let's talk about these soul cores. Mogatsu Warrior is a massive pressure play sort of soul core. There are two versions that you can activate. And so if you want to activate the second version, you basically just activate the skill again when you have nine anima and you just like send out a bajillion more projectiles and it's really good. Um, aside from that, I didn't really care what Mogatsu I have. You can see lowish level compared to other cores. White core, rank nine. None of this matters because look, anima charge bonus, cumulative damage, same thing here. Even if I max this out to like, what is it, AA minus or AA plus if I had a rank 30, it's really just going to be negligible. So I didn't really bother boosting it that much. I was mostly just interested in the anima. That's pretty much it. I'm not even kidding. So just a feral Mogatsu, which is pretty standard. There's, this is very low requirements. Next, I had Suiki. Suiki, I did want to test what it was like to have it maxed out at rank 30. Anima bonus enemy saturated does help. Uh, it's really, I mean, go ahead, boost it. But the saturation application is basically this. So increases anima when you inflict the specified negative status ailment on an enemy. So the moment they get saturated, you get a bunch of anima, which is pretty cool. And Suiki is pretty good at inflicting saturate because it's a water-based attack. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, definitely pretty fun. And what's the utility of this? Well, as you can see here in the tooltip, you can literally just move around and hit a bunch of targets, which is pretty cool. Uh, last but not least, we have Maelstrom Onib Core. I was tasked with just picking any Onib, but you can pick whatever you want. I just went with water simply because, well, hey, if I can saturate an enemy using Suiki, you know, it's and I don't have to use Suiki, I can just use the water only be to do it. All I cared about was Yokai ability key pulse. I would recommend that you boost this up as well. But yeah, I just picked pretty much base cores. Now let's get into the animations of each of these cores just so that you know what we are working with. This is very important and this will actually kind of force you to require to really pay attention to what's going on. So let's start with Owl. So as a reminder, I am checking to see how quickly I can respond by blocking. The soonest I can block is basically the soonest I can respond to something. So let's check out Owl. Let's see how soon I can block. So I'm holding down block. Okay, reasonably quick. All right, now let's showcase that again. All right, you summon a bunch of Yokai Realms. Oh, which by the way, you can keep pulse and get a ton of anima back. It's pretty crazy with Itsumare. So next up is Itsumare. Let's see how soon my character will block reasonably quick while the animation itself is long it doesn't look like the recovery is too crazy now what about ongyoki again reasonably quick so it, it's these aren't like super fast animations but it's like all right the animations take a while but at least the recovery from out of those isn't a problem now what about the other soul cores on the feral so magatsu Nine anima version, long animation, but quick downtime. What about six anima version? Kind of the same thing. So while these are longer animations, once again, you don't have that much recovery. Now what about Suiki? Okay, you can control Suiki as you like. You can just hold it in place. Um, if you want to stop Suiki, just literally let go. Now there is what appears to be a long animation downtime, but let's again test this. Nope! You can cancel a lot of recovery time. They can move around and sequence abilities quite handily. Let's showcase that once again. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's definitely a lot of fun. So mess around with that. And then last but not least, the fastest core arguably is simply gonna be Oni B. So yeah, it, it can be pretty wild. Throw an Oni B and attack. So Oni B is gonna be your fast cancel core. Suiki kind of works in that function and you have a lot of pressure plays. But now let's talk about some cool combinations that you can use with Owl and Itsumare. Check this out. Summon all the things. Detonate all the things. Oh yeah, that can happen. And as a reminder for Itsumare, Itsumare's damage is based on the number of Yokai Realms available. Now, because we are generating the Yokai Realms ourselves, these won't do nearly as much damage as say, if a yokai just generates the realms itself. There. Let's 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 explode them all. 
Nice. Isn't that great? And yes, you can actually do that. So let me showcase the power of that. I don't think the dojo is going to show it too well. Now, naturally, with Owl, I want you to pay attention to the max key damage first. That's pretty crazy. And it's even more noticeable when you do it against bosses. I don't know, for whatever reason, like, these enemies don't appear to take that much key damage, but in the actual gameplay, it can be pretty nuts. Now, one thing to be wary of with Owl is, of course, it is a long animation time that you are stuck with, but it can be pretty remarkable nonetheless when you can pull it off. So here's like a crazy little thing you can do. Let's summon a bunch of pools. So I usually like to unlock. Oh, thanks. Hey, what's up, man? <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty crazy combo, but as you can imagine, it's quite expensive, but but if you just need a quick source of anima, remember, it's Amade's rank 30, so we get like a ton of anima back on key pulse. How much is it exactly? At least, well, at least. Let's go with at least, okay? So, the cost of Owl is 5, right? But we generate 4 Yokai Realms. We get at least 1.6, so at least 6.4, so it's already a net gain. But if we take a look in the Shifling Tree, if you do a perfect key pulse, <laughs> you get 1.2 per. Oh yeah, that is dumb. It is really dumb. And <laughs> you get so much anima back, it's comical. And imagine, in the Dark Realm, it's going to be even stupider. So you're not going to be without anima just using owl core with itsumare and then couple that with the fact that you just can surround a whole area with yokai realms and then just detonate all of them together so it's super stupid straight up as you saw just killed that poor guy now one thing i want to make you wary of when it comes to the owl core is that it's good at key damage but as you can see the tracking can be a little weird it, that that ghost it, like, it can be a little weird, so sometimes it takes forever to track on targets, but it's not very good against enemies that block. So you need to bear that in mind. So, alright. Now, so I've kind of showed you the cool thing you can do with the two of them together. Now what about Ongyoki? Well, Ongyoki is basically your disengage. And yeah, enemies move away. Pretty cool. Alright, so let's get on to these Guardian Spirit, this Guardian Spirits, Talismans. So let's just showcase what you can do. Magatsu Warrior is like a great pressure play. It's also phenomenal to help you kind of like chill out for a little bit because you're performing a lot of hits against a character and it works really well against enemies that are low on key. Particularly if you have the following. Life Recovery, Amrita Absorption. When you pair this with say things like Extraction Talisman and you are fighting an enemy that's out of key. It can be quite remarkable. All right, let's deplete the key and I'll just show you how many projectiles you can start to get. All right, nine anima version. You see all those little bits and look at all that healing that occurred. So yeah, really valuable to do that. Um, when it comes to Sui Key, I find that I pretty much just use her as like another get out of jail free card of sorts. So I'll just show you as an example. Oh, hey, dodge away. I basically just use it as a nice repositioning tool. Oni B, on the other hand, is phenomenal for the cancel aspect of it. But yeah, the Brute, brute Guardian Spirit stuff, like this time around, while it is nice to have the Brute attack to counter stuff, I find that because of the nature of these cores being kind of slow, it, it may not be the best for you to try to combo into Brute and to say it's a mod. It's like, it's just, it doesn't feel as fluid as say if you had a really fast core on here. In any case, let me start showing Yokai Shift possibilities. This is where stuff can get, in my opinion, quite beautiful. Uh, well, I might as well explode you, buddy. <laughs> this is so dumb, man. Alright, and now I'm gonna pop Yokai Shift. And then here's some cool stuff you can do Garden Spirit Talisman, use the freaking owl. Oh, this is gonna die, isn't it? Yeah, well, what, here's what I wanted to showcase. This... Oh, I don't have the anima, dude. Give me my freaking anima. Why is it like this in Yokai Shift? I have no clue. Okay, well... After this and Owl, if I would do it... 
What I like to do is then charge. It's Zumare right after. Let's see if I can showcase all of this. Chances are the target may just straight up die. All right. Let's go. Now let's go. Do your thing, man. Oh, if I was a little faster, I could have done the chicken bone too. So it's pretty, it's a really huge power play if you can pull it off. And so, yeah, it's it's quite remarkable. Now, what about with Soya? So this one's pretty neat. I like to do this and then start off with that. Getting close. Use my Gatsu Warrior. And always move around with Suiki. And then, yeah, it's it's kind of dumb. So let me showcase these things again. Activate Sohaya, use this. Charge in when you're close and you're comfortable, Magatsu Warrior. If you're not, you can charge in. And then Suiki around. But the reason why I'm recommending that you do Sohaya into this is because you want to charge up the Magatsu Warrior to get the 9 anima version. Because normally when you start up Yokai Shift, you really only have access to that version. Even though I would love to do this version and have all the pew pew go everywhere. Cause yeah, it's pretty fun, right? Yeah, shoot all the things! That feels pretty cool, you're just shooting a bunch of lasers. So again, Zoya, use this, you can attack a bunch. Charge in. And then do that. Pretty cool. And then of course move around, which is great cause you're already moving around. So you'll have a lot of fun with that. Now let's showcase some things with just the weapons together and then I'll mix up everything with the entire package so you guys can have a lot of fun messing around with this. This is It's definitely a lot of fun. So with the sword, you have access to a lot of defensive types of play courtesy of timely guards and whatnot. And you can really just work on the weapon side of things because both of them have Izuna drop, which can be pretty nutty. Here's a cool thing I like to do. And to... Tiger Sprint. Feels rather thematic. Get out of here. Yeah, it can be pretty cool. Sword Fist is pretty cool, so if you want to use like Dragon Ninja Plus or whatnot, please be my guest. This is yet going to be another fast gameplay aspect that you're going to have to kind of get used to. But it's a lot of fun when you start layering in the Soul Course. Remember, your Feral Guardian Spirit will more or less take care of a lot of fast-paced play that you may want. So do pay attention to that. I also like doing sheet swaps with this too. And so it can be a lot of fun in that regard. Oh, screwed that up, that's okay. Pretty neat though. Now let's just showcase the whole package because there's going to be so many different permutations of things that you can work with, but let's just go with the fast stuff first before I work with the setup aspect of this, alright? Alright, back wave, don't complete Tempest, switch weapons, get them up. Look at that, is going to drop. He's going to die, so I don't even need to go for the 9 anima version. So let's just showcase again some of the feral based things against uh, Yoki. Alright, you done? Yes, you are. Blowing Shadow, reposition even more. Kind of cool how you can use that to correct yourself almost. Alright, let's switch weapons. And Yoki shifts. Dead. Pretty cool, huh? And then I'm sure you can add in other things when it comes to yokai shift so you can kick even more butt. Now let's showcase some brute things. When, when it comes to the brute, as I've kind of hinted at before, you're mostly going to be setting things up. A lot of these cores are not meant for fast based plays, but these are all phenomenal power plays. Just to illustrate this, he still has enough time and as you can see he can hit me, so that's why I wouldn't really recommend it. However, what can be fun is when you have an enemy on the ground, you can usually get a pretty safe Itsumate off. Come on, you wanna do a thing? Let's do a thing. Do a thing. Attack, dude. This is awkward. Oh, come on, I messed that up. I was gonna try to show something real quick. Please attack. It's Amare, do your thing. Oh, he actually dodged. That sucked. 
course, you can use the Brute Attack if you'd like. Which can be really helpful after, say, Reversed Impact. Let me show that again. But this can be fun. Oh, come on. So that's at least one thing you can do. But again, because of the long animations of these cores, you do need to pay attention to when you're going to use them. Battering Ram into the Tsumata is pretty decent too. Dude, how is he dodging him? <laughs> it's pretty unreal. All right, let's showcase this against a Yoki to really illustrate the whole power play aspect of it. Woo! Let's go! Oh, I timed, mistimed it. That's okay. Let's destroy him. Ah, he's dead. But you've definitely got a lot you can do. Holy cow. That's a lot of pools. I think in all honesty, what I, I won't be able to show case like true justice to this setup in here. I'll just show you the scroll. Enough chit chat. Let's get to the scroll. Any case, thank you for watching. I will see you guys momentarily. Let's be cool. Let's go. All right, you know what's up. Showcasing some good old gameplay. Now the scroll of the dam that I picked involves a purple Mezuki, and you may be wondering, isn't Mezuki one of the easier enemies? And yeah, it definitely can be compared to like Saito Toshimitsu, but this specific scroll has quite a lot of enemies, and I really wanted to showcase some of the other strengths that are involved with this setup as opposed to just like dealing with one massive threatening enemy. Because one of the other great difficulties that you'll have in Neo 2 is simply just dealing with multiple enemies at a time. So, how can I take advantage of this? And I'm going to show you just that. Let's see what I go with. I decide to do a subpar Itsumare except it kills a dweller, so is it really subpar? Not really. So now I gotta worry about the umbrellas, and you know how much we love those. So here's what you can do. Knock it down, and then Mogatsu kill it. Just kill it right away, don't wanna deal with that crap. And then continuing onwards, now I've just got the Oni to deal with. So let's inflict some saturated, because I use the Oni B to do that. I'm going for a confusion proc, and I'm being a little cautious, because I just don't wanna fight a ton of enemies at the same time. And then let's see what happens here. Yeah, we got that brute grapple and it's dead. Isn't that devastating? So, okay, on to the next one. Let's go. We've got a Yoki. Yokis feel kind of weird because they kind of pause a bit and then they kind of just like roll around. And so they can actually catch you off guard from time to time. But fortunately, with our constant pressure, we can nullify this enemy altogether. And so it can feel really great. Of course, I need to be careful. I've got enemies around me. Oh, look, imagine if that thing paralyzed me. That would have sucked. So I'm making sure to put it out of its misery before it can do anything devastating to me. Also, pay attention to the fact that I'm switching Guardian Spirits so I can get that extra anima bonus on purifying a Yokai Realm. This is awesome. And now this is where things get tricky. I've got three enemies to deal with at the same time. So how am I gonna manage this? Well, I wanted to take out the, the small dweller, but the fact of the matter is I have this guy shooting me. So what do I do instead? I use Sui Ki and then go into Yokai Shit so I can nullify an enemy right away. So yeah, there. I didn't use the 9 anima version there because I was just so eager to kill that Yoki. I did end up wasting quite a lot of Yokai Shift, but I'm like, you know what, whatever. Let's just kill these guys and let's just move on. I, I don't care anymore. I want these things to die. So let's go. You dead? Awkward pause. You're dead. I believe we're at the boss now, if I'm not mistaken. So I've got a ton of anima, right? And there's already Yokai Realms, and what does Mezuki do? Spawns the Yokai Realms. What do you think I'm gonna do? Oh, you guessed it. It's Sumari, let's go! Boom! Kill that dweller, and look at all the damage I inflicted against a purple Mezuki. And look how powerful Owl is now. Oh my god, that max key damage. And keep in mind, it's a purple enemy who's cursed. And look at that, Owl yet again. Wow, that's a lot of max key damage I've inflicted. So this really sets the stage for what is possible. I try to go for a Beyond Infinity here. Um, I think I messed up a little bit. Yeah, I messed up a little bit. And then I just like did Owl for no reason. It was a complete waste there. And so I was like, all right, you know what? I need to, I need to relax. I need to get my head in the game so I can focus on using these tactics as well as I can. 
So now I'm like, all right, let's go with fists. Let's deplete the key. And then, ooh, opportunist twice. That was nice. And then check this out. Let's inflict saturate. Let's get confusion. Let's get beyond infinity. Let's get a ton of damage. Let's beat him to an absolute crisp. Look at that damage output. That was amazing. Ooh, that did a lot of work. But yeah, as you can see, purple Mezuki is quite tanky. And so this is going to be quite an endurance fest. I actually admittedly have a little difficulty because for whatever reason I was just really tired when I was doing this. But yeah, I'm able to use things like Ongyoki to account for the fact that I'm a little exhausted and I'm not playing perfectly on point. And look at this, look how powerful Owl is, man. Isn't that crazy? All right, Brute Yokai Shift time. I unfortunately wasn't able to capitalize this on as well as I had in the dojo, but you can still see nonetheless, that's a ton of max key damage that's inflicted. And see, so yeah, most of my Yokai Shift evaporated, which, which did kind of suck, and I could have probably played that a little better. But at this point, I'm just going all out. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna deplete your key. I'm gonna make you explode. Boom. So what's next? Ah, let's see how this works. Throw out a bunch of extra Yokai Realms, and then I get a ton of Yokai Realm. Uh, with those Yokai Realms, I get a ton of Anima back. I threw out Owl again, very risky, but Magatsu kind of got me back to full health, right? Which is great. This is so good. And now it's just back to the game plan, staying in the action. I'm trying to inflict confusion, I believe. And, ooh, that wasn't good. I'm trying to showcase Opportunist, but my head isn't really in the game. It takes me a little bit to reset, so... Again, purple enemies really are a test of endurance. And yeah, let's just keep this going. I've tried to inflict confusion, I realize it's not gonna work, so let's just throw in whatever damage I can. All right, what's next? Use Owl! Oh, goodbye, Key. It was nice It was nice knowing you. And then here we go, stab it in the face. Let's see what I can set up. Doesn't look like anything right now, but oh man, that anima bonus on purification is so good. I use Ongyoki, and then like an idiot, I released it, and then I get grabbed. Oops! So much for showcasing the power of that. So I'm like, ah, oh, I need to be a little more careful. And so, yeah, I I've kind of lost the mojo. I try to go for a Severing Spins finish, nearly get grabbed again, and then at least I get the kill. Man, that was a that was a close call. In any case, yeah, this is a powerful setup, and if you use it right, you can kick some serious butt. In any case, thank you guys for watching. Hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys next time.